well. Good evening. It's Friday evening. It is quarter to nine. I have just arrived at my destination and I am knackered. I procrastinated <laughs> for a long time tonight. I uh, finished my work about six. I had my tea and I sat down and watched the telly and I just... Uh, I was humming and hawing whether to go. So I've come out anyway because I knew tomorrow when I woke up I'd regret not being out and my wife's busy tomorrow so I've got a free pass so I had to come out I had to come out because I would have regretted it tomorrow so I'm here I'm not too far away this is prob probably my local Monroe that I'm going to go up tomorrow and I've got the map out here I'm having a look at it I might talk a bit about maps tomorrow I might do a wee bit about maps and the differences and some of the advantages and disadvantages of using your phone versus using a map um, why it's good to have them both and stuff like that but we'll see we'll see I might not <laughs> <laughs> Weather's not looking great tomorrow, but anyway, that's why I think it'll be quite useful to have the map compass and the map on the phone. We'll go through with bits and bobs, but for now, as I said, I'm knackered. I'm just going to get the bed down and I'll report to you in the morning after a good night's sleep. So, yeah, see you in a few hours. Well, it's 8 o'clock I'm going to get going as soon as possible and I think I'm going to definitely need some navigation skills today because the clouds right down but I've chosen this route as well for another reason trying to um, yeah, try to make it easier with the weather conditions today but I'll go into that in a wee while but for now I'm going to have my caffeine before getting wrapped up and starting my walk and I'll report back on the trail Well, that's me on the trail now, as you can see, and a lovely big track. It goes along the side of this loch, so navigation <laughs> hasn't been an issue. I've only had my phone out to navigate, just to make sure. Oh, I didn't need to really, because I've been on this track a hundred times. But um, I just it's quite useful just to take the phone out to make sure you're starting on the right track. That, that's often been my downfall in the past, is getting lost right at the start of walks. But anyway, more about that later on. A uh, lovely, lovely walk. I said why, I was going to explain why I chose to come here today. Um, there's two main reasons. One reason is you can see the cloud, well maybe not this way, when I spin you around this way you'll see that the cloud base is uh, it's quite low. In fact, I'll do that now, I'll spin you around and show you. Right, hopefully you can see me. Hopefully I'm in shot. Yeah, you can see the cloud base is, is right down over the hills. You usually get a lovely view up this lock and you can you know you can just, you can just about see the Monroe at the top of it when you come up but not today so I did check the forecasts I use MWIS Mountain Weather Information Service and the Met Office Mountain Specialist forecast most often along with the BBC one and they've been pretty spot on they did say the cloud was going to be down today so that's one of the reasons I came here because if I'd gone straight up I was going to do two hills called Benmore and Stabinion which you go straight up from the roadside and I would, have, I would have been in the cloud within 10 minutes and not seen much. At least here I've got a walk-in of about 6 kilometres before I get into the clouds and I'll enjoy some of the views. So that's one reason. The second reason I'll come on to a wee bit later. But let's, uh, let's crack on along past this loch and I'll report back when I get to the top of it. Oh yeah, so I think hopefully we'll be able to make me out come down just a wee bit. The track's just here. Um, I've not come off it, I don't know if it's being picked up by the camera, but towards the end of the lock now, and the reason I've stopped here is just to show you something. You can see there's snow uh, where I'm going. It's not widespread coverage, but there's patches of snow, so I'm glad I've got my ice axe. I always say this, but always bring your ice axe and crampons any time in the winter or even early spring and know how to use them. And I am saying that through being caught out. <laughs> 
a few times many years ago when I was young and uh, invincible, or so I thought. Accidents do happen, um, and yeah, in fact, last weekend when the weather was similar to this, there was three fatalities in the Scottish mountains. And you know what? Leaving the car park, you don't see any snow. You think it's fine, and in days gone by, I might have said, "Oh, there's no snow. I'll leave my crampons and ice axe in the car." But unless you can see the whole route, it's always worthwhile taking them. Anyway, here endeth the lesson. What I was pointing out is at the beer lack, you might not be able to see it, but at the lowest point, which is where the path goes, there is a big patch of snow. So I might be able to get round it, or it might be soft enough for my for me to kick steps in. That's another thing. I've got winter boots on, which can kick steps in snow. Summer boots can't do that, <laughs> uh, and summer boots can't take crampons. Anyway, shut up, Murray. I'm sound like a teacher lecturing, but yeah, <laughs> there's a patch of snow there, and um, I might need to get the crampons there. So yeah, let's uh, let's go and see <laughs> if I need them or not. And another good <laughs> reason to have winter boots. It's more often than not they're waterproof for streams. And these poles come in very useful for these things like this. They're not cool, but very useful. Wow. Well, as I said earlier on, this is probably one of the closest mountains. Uh, it's about 20 miles for me to drive to the start point, and it's probably, as the crow flies, not much more to the summit. But anyway, once you get up into these glens, ahead of the glens, it's actually quite feels quite remote. Uh, even though we're not, there's something beautiful about this area. It often gets called, well, people find it less interesting than the jaggy peaks further west, but like the Cairngorms, it's not until you get into it and into these glens. Maybe a bit more rolling on the top, but there's crags, there's so many features. Such a lovely big landscape behind me. And these big boulders, I'll, I'll spin you around so you can see them. These big quartzite boulders are really impressive. Look at them. Big, massive pieces. There's another one there. Don't know what's caused them. If any geologists watching, let me know why is there such a big <laughs> quartz right boulder here. Oh, Platypus floating about. Anyway, you can see behind me now the quarry. Don't know again if you can make out that patch of snow. That is a bit concerning. Um, it, obviously, when you're far away, it doesn't look very big. But I bet you, when I'm at the bottom of that, that's going to be a serious uh, obstacle to cross. Um, just up here, actually. <laughs> just remembering. Not far from here, I, I camped when I did a loop uh, in really icy conditions. I'll put a link to that video in the description. And I can't mix that frozen lochen up there and before continuing on. That was fantastic as well, but... Anyway, I'm just going to check my phone. This is where I'm... I've not used my paper map yet, and I'm going to use it later on just for practice, and you'll see why. Um, and I'll tell you a few things. So I'm just making sure... I know where I am, to be honest with you, because as I said, I've been here before, but if I had not... If this was the first time I've been here, the good thing about the phones is it'll tell you exactly where you are. That's an advantage over the maps. And I, I suppose what I should say, uh, when you're <laughs> talking, if I'm, talking about, if I'm going to be talking about maps, it doesn't matter whether you're using a paper map or uh, an app. You need to know how to read a map or they're going to be about as good as a chocolate teapot. Um, so yeah, know, know how to use them. Uh, the other thing which is really important is I don't have a signal here, so it was important that I downloaded the maps it's fine looking at these apps on your phone when you're at home with a full Wi-Fi signal or full 4G, 5G, whatever it is. But a lot of them, you have to download the app, the, the topo or the, the tile where you're going to. And I'd suggest you probably download quite a few round about it as well, just in case you get lost and you wander off and you need to find your way back. So that's, that's important. Make sure you download the area that you're looking at because if you've not got a signal, it won't work. The other thing I would say is make sure you've got decent you know, you, you get a decent app, don't use Google Maps. Surely nobody surely nobody uses Google Maps to navigate. I have seen Mountain Rescue talk about this. So there must it must happen, but I can't believe I, I honestly can't believe you, you use Google Maps when you go into the hills. You'll probably see why when I get up there. It's it's fine now under the cloud. Um but when you get up there it's uh, it's gonna be a serious proposition. I've also got two other items with me which I'll show you when I stop. I'll probably need to get them out, which I think are essential when you're using if you're using um, a phone for navigation. In fact, I've got three essential other bits that you need with it. So um, yeah, that's it. Make sure you've got enough battery in your phone. Sometimes uh, you can put your phone onto airplane mode to reduce the battery usage. Make sure you're, you're at 100%. And that relates to one of the other things that I've got with the phone. But yeah, they're good, they're really good. Um, probably more useful if used in the right way than a, than a map, but you do still need a map and compass. I suggest that you do anyway. Right, I am probably about a kilometre in a straight line 
until we get to that snow patch. So, yeah, let's go on. Let's get up there and see, uh, see how bad it really is. So at this point, at the end of the loch, uh, the, the going starts to get a bit steeper and I headed up the steeper slopes towards that snow patch to see if I could get past it. Right, that's where there's a bit of snow and it is a bit more... Yeah, a bit bigger than uh, it looks when it was way down there. It just looks like a wee bit. So I'm going to get my sacks out here. The snow is soft, soft enough for me to kick steps into. So I'm going to ice axe out, pull away one pole, one, one axe and head up. That's, that's why it's so important to have this kit with you. I could probably try and go up without the ice axe, but it just takes one slip and there's no way to stop. And, and because uh, I won't be needing an axe for a wee while, I've not stowed away the pole completely at this period, so it's easily accessed when I need it. So, let's go. Oh. Snow's always soft around the edges of these patches. <laughs> Ah, right. Whew. Maybe keep the ice axe out just in case. Right. So, as you saw that bit of snow, couldn't really circumnavigate it that easily. But I think there won't be much more snow where I'm going, but I'm going to keep this out, or stow it, where it's easily accessible. Um, so I don't have to take the, uh, the pack off. So I'm just going to give it a wee clean. <coughs> Let's stow it down the back here. So if I need it, I can just grab it quite easily. Right, onwards we go. So I was certainly glad that I hadn't stowed the axe away because before long there was a few snow patches on relatively steep ground that were barring my way and the ice axe came out. I didn't put the poles away because the, the snow patches were relatively short and not too run out, but it certainly came in handy. And uh, it's always it's always good to be able to have these things to hand and it saves a bit of time as opposed to having to take the backpack off and unclip the axe. You can just whip it out <laughs> when you need it. Anyway, I was soon across the snow patches and heading to the summit. What a view, eh? Fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, I was going to say and tell you, the second reason why I chose uh, this hill today is because there's quite strong winds forecast. It's not just because down there I was getting a view and the cloud level was low, but there are strong... There's a mountain here, lots of mountain here, so anyway. <laughs> um, there's strong winds and the, the glen here is running uh, perpendicular to the, the way the wind's going, so it's giving me shelter. Up the tops here, it's it's 20 mile an hour, 25 mile an hour winds with gusts up to 30, 35, so it would have been a bit unpleasant. And even now, because I'm, I'm in the lee, the summit's sheltering me as well. So that was the reason why sometimes you can pick your hills and uh, had I gone up the other ones I was talking about, I'd be getting blown off my feet with no views. So this is, this is a win-win today, <laughs> a bonus. So I think it will get windier the higher up I go. Uh, I might have to stop and put another layer on and uh, I'll discuss a wee bit more about the maps when I do that. Right, let's barry on. Right, the uh, cloud layer is just <laughs> literally about 20 metres ahead of me, so when I stop here it's getting a bit colder when I get my jacket on. I'd also possibly get my, uh, my goggles out here, so let's do that. Right, whilst I've stopped here, let's let me tell you a wee bit more. Oh, there's my scotch eggs like, rolling out my bag. <laughs> um, let me tell you about the extra items that I, I have with me for my my phone. Um, one of them of which I'm going to use now. So one of the things that can happen with the phones which makes them not so good is they can uh, they can get wet and yeah even though they say they're water resistant they can they can get wet and stop working because you can't use the touch screen. So what I've got with me is this which is a I use it when I'm kayaking actually it's a waterproof um, pouch uh, which allows you to use the phone through it. So that's going in there now because it is forecast to get wet, there's a wee bit of rain in there, so that's a very useful thing to have because, as I said, not only can the phone stop working completely, but if you can't use the touch screen because it's really wet, it makes them useless and you can be left in a rather sticky situation. So, yeah, I use that. Another thing is always bring a power bank with me, especially in the winter because the, the newer phones aren't so bad, but I certainly had with some of the older ones, is they, lose, they lose power in the cold. 
So having a power bank and the, the cable to go with them. So that's two of the things I suggest you bring. And the third one is a backup. Um, and it's a map, which I've got with me today. So I'm actually going to use this uh, and take some bearings just for some practice just now. And what I'll do is I'll tell you a wee bit about the maps and my opinions of maps and compasses in a wee while. But for now, let's get everything sorted and yeah, head into the mist and see if we can get to the summit of the mountains. Right, I've been uh, hand railing this line of uh, fence posts. So one of the things about mapping or paper maps is uh, they don't tell you exactly where you are, which is one of the big advantages of the GPS or the phone, uh, using the phone. But uh, I don't have a map case for this one. So if it's raining, which is, isn't at the moment, it's damp. Sometimes that can help. But uh, yeah, I'm going to take a bearing now, which is good practice and uh, see where I am, so... I'm sheltering from the wind with my back to try and stop this blowing away Another thing that people don't talk about, it's always good to have a backup I mean, you always should have a bit of map and a compass but all the things that can happen to your phone like I was talking about, getting, getting wet, dropping it uh, running out of battery doesn't happen with the maps but the same thing applies if you drop a map and it's likely to blow away. <laughs> People don't talk about that. So if you use maps all the time, always have a backup as a phone. It works both ways. And if it gets wet and you don't have a, a map case, it can render it useless as well. So um, there are pros and cons to both. So it's, it's always worthwhile having both. And the other thing is some areas of Scotland, like the Coolan, there's a strong magnetic effect on the, of the, the geology which can put the compass off so yeah it's worthwhile uh, bearing that in mind as well so anyway that's my bearing there so yeah let's go i don't think we're too far from the top right ah. oh the summit here we are top of the mountain so i'm just going to get a wee, a wee bite to eat here and put this away i'll use my phone for navigating back down oh yes there's a ptarmigan over there <laughs> Lots of wildlife in these hills and in this weather when the snow's melting away a lot of them have got their winter coats on and you can see them I didn't actually spend too long on the summit another couple came up but the, the wind was picking up and it was starting to rain ever so slightly that was the, the bad weather coming in so I about turned and started to head back down the same way I'd come. I had had a plan to go and do a loop but that would have left me on an exposed shoulder of the mountain and uh, I was keen to get back down into the, the glen and the shelter from the wind uh, as I mentioned before. Anyway I was soon on that last snow patch and uh, I descended down there and then stopped for a bit to camera. That's me coming down towards the end of this patch of snow and I know that below here there's no snow because I've come up this way so I'm going to stop here and get the axe away you probably can't tell but it's now raining so I think I'll put the big camera away for a wee while and I'll report back uh, when I get back down to the van but it's still lovely here the view behind me it's just what a place if it wasn't raining I'd probably stop and get a bite to eat here but it's raining I didn't by the way I didn't stay at the top too long because the wind was um, whipping in there was another couple came up they'd come from the more popular side so I was chatting to them for a while and um, decided just to head back down. The plan was to stop here and have some meat, but I'm just going to barry on and get back to the van. So I'll report back when I get to the van. Let's just get this ice axe away, it's now. I packed everything away back into the bag, away from the, the rain, and I soon started heading back down and off the steeper slopes and down towards the, the lochs. The first one's Loch Anuin, and then the second one's actually, the longer one is Loch Turret. And I was soon found myself heading towards that with the, the, the walk back to the van. But I was tell you what, I was looking forward to a cup of tea and a scotch egg when I got there, so it put a spring in my step to get down quicker.
Right, I'm back. <laughs> Having a cup of tea and a scotch egg, look at that, lovely. Um, anyway, so just a quick overview. Um, yeah, it was great. Uh, although the weather's manky, it's always better to be out than in, I think, and I feel I feel so much better for being out and had a great time. I did need the navigation, so um, I suppose an overview of that, you need both. <laughs> uh, the one thing I did forget to say is that with the the phone apps and the GPS, I, mean, I never talked about GPS devices, but you can use those as well. But you can download specific routes, uh, GPX files and what have you off the internet, which is good uh, and an, an advantage. I suppose you could do the same with uh, paper maps, you just need a pencil or a pen. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's, it, the weather is getting worse, the, the rain's now on. Um, but the route, as I said, was perfect. Uh, I was out of the wind for most of the way round and yeah, uh, I think I've timed it just right with the rain just coming on now. So, yeah, there was no 360s today. So, um, yeah, Jerry obviously isn't here today, but he would have been disappointed at the top. But he uh, he couldn't make today, but he's I think he's out tomorrow, and I can't do tomorrow, so that's why I'm out today. So, I bet you he gets better weather than me. I bet you it's a stonking of <laughs> stonking day. He'll be doing 360s every five minutes tomorrow. Anyway, I'm going to shut up that rain, it's actually getting heavier. So, I'm going to retreat into the van and have my scotch egg. See you later. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I'll see you in the next adventure. Bah. Hey Murray, hope you can hear this. Whether you couldn't make it on Sunday, you had to go on Saturday, or you couldn't make it on Saturday. So, I know you didn't great weather yesterday, but give you a wee idea of how we are today. Uh, see if we can identify that big mountain. Let me see if I can turn around. Uh, give you a 360. Your wave. You can see I think I might just have got a better day. <laughs>